2017, so far, has the lowest ice volume ever recorded in the satellite record, and almost certainly in the history of Homo sapiens on Earth. So we're, we're going into the freeze season without much freezing going on of Arctic ice. The ice that's there is very thin. So will we get through next summer with ice still on the Arctic? It would surprise me. And, and even if I'm wrong by a year on that, and, and, and I don't think it'll be September of 2019 before it happens, I think it'll be sometime in the summer of 2018 that we have an ice free Arctic. That's sheer catastrophe. Yeah. Now between here and there, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with the financial system, with the monetary system. And I don't track this very closely anymore like I used to, but you only have to pay peripheral attention to know that things have gone quite catastrophically awry in terms of what we call the economy, the industrial economy, particularly in the United States. So you look at the, at the bubbles that we have created and that are currently being created, and you and I know what happens to bubbles. They pop. Right. And the, the popping of those bubbles always catches people by complete surprise. The majority is caught by complete surprise when a bubble pops. But of course they all pop. That's what happens. Bubbles pop. So, of course the financial bubble is going to pop. Will it be within the next weeks? Wouldn't surprise me. And, and there's no way that humans persist in persist long in the absence of ice in the Arctic Ocean. So I think you, you just add those two facts together and we don't have long on the planet. And again, I would like to be wrong. I'd, I'd be one of the happier people on the planet if I was alive and, and 7.5 billion other people were alive in another five years. I think that's unbelievably unlikely. I can't imagine a situation in which that would actually happen. Yeah. But I would be a huge fan. So people ask me all the time, what are you going to do if you're wrong? Celebrate? <laughs> and, and my response is, how are you going to live if I'm right? If the evidence I put together is actually a right, is that going to influence how you live? You know, what, what I'm trying to do here and what I've finally begun to do myself is live with urgency, the, the kind of urgency that we deny when we adhere to the infinite growth paradigm, when we capitulate to the notion that we can have infinite growth on a finite planet. I recognize that that's impossible. Yeah. Uh, I recognize that you have to be absolutely insane to believe that it is possible. And so I'm trying to live with the urgency that comes with admitting that death is not far away. If I'm wrong, perfect. So much the better. Right. I'd love that. Right. Yeah, I would too. I mean, you know, uh, I, I want to be wrong about everything. Like whenever, the, you know, the deniers come up and like, no, it's the grand solar minimum or it's something else or it's, you know, I'm just like, you know, if, if the collapse of the planet is, it, it, it doesn't really matter what's causing it, honestly. If it's like, if it means the collapse of the planet, like, that's not good news. You know, and if, if ice caps are growing, that would be really great. That would be really awesome. I'm, I'm always like, really? Please tell me more because that's a good thing, <laughs> you know? But yes. all evidence points to the contrary. And, you know, I, I don't know where the people are getting their information. I don't know if this is... Starting to, I'm starting to feel like there's just a, such a massive um, conspiracy to to get people to you know to get people confused, you know, that it's, yeah. it's infiltrated. Yeah, there is. It's the public education system. Right. <laughs> That's the conspiracy. That's it's intended to dumb people down. It's working right. great. I I've talked to people with college degrees. 
that are like, you know, they're like, I, you know, I went to college and I believe this craziness, you know, I'm like, you, you don't, you went to college and you didn't, what did you learn? I don't, I'm not sure, you know, how you got that degree, but clearly you're not paying attention. You weren't paying attention to, you know, cause and effect, you know, the music. Critical thinking is not a strong suit in the American education system. It's a scientific, you know, uh, yeah, laws of thermodynamics, just, you know, uh, it's not happening. So um, I, I, would I, would love love to, I would love to think we're headed into an ice age. Yeah. Humans in ice, no problem. Right. You know, I just went to Norway for the first time and saw the northern lights for the first time. And I didn't get cold. I'm out there where it's been dark for weeks and it's gonna be dark for weeks to come above the Arctic Circle. And it was cold. Right. It was really cold. Right. But I wasn't cold because yeah. we have this technology now. We've had the one for a while fire. Right. We've actually managed to harness fire quite a while ago. And we also have clothing now. So an ice age, please, please bring it on. Yeah. We could do, we could do, you know, many things with the ice <laughs> still. And maybe, I, who knows, maybe, you know, whatever, maybe some, some insane uh, negative feedback kicks in or something, you know, who, who, you know. I'm, who I'm completely open to any miracle that happens. Right. Again, I'm not, I'm not attached to the outcome. Right. I, the evidence points me to believe certain things about what's coming, including the near-term demise of, for most of us, our favorite species. But I'm not attached to that outcome. In fact, I don't even want it to happen. Right. I'm also not attached to the outcome of Santa Claus coming through my chimney this year and eating the cookies and milk. Right. So it's cool to have it. Think, that know. non-attachment to outcome is absolutely fundamental for me. It allows me to get through another day. Right. Because for many years, I taught in my classrooms, 21 years in pretty much every course I ever taught on college campuses, I promoted the idea of not having children. Because I recognize that there are already so many people on the planet, we're in, we're in human population overshoot. Right. That was obvious from the first day I started teaching. And then every single one of my students went out and had children. If I was attached to the outcome, I'd be suicidal at this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> we didn't listen. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had students come up to me and say, I'd like you to meet my 37 children, Sarah. <laughs> because I would point out that Americans consume 37 times the natural resources of Kenyans, for example. Right. And so when you have a child in this, in this country, it's like having 37 Kenyans. Yeah. And so, so my students would come up and, and, of course, make a joke about it, because that's what we do in this society. Right. When, whenever any serious matter comes up, we make jokes about it. Yeah. <laughs> They'd introduce me to their 37 children. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and that, regardless of whether, like, regardless of just the, the warming um, thing that's going on, right? The, the whole warming thing. Uh, you know, we're destroying the planet just through our, you know, if you take the whole science of, you know, the warming of the atmosphere and the melting of the ice caps and the, all that, we're, oh, you know, fishing all the fish out of the ocean and we're, you know, throwing all the plastic in the ocean and we're deforesting all the forests and we're, you know, we're doing so many other things that if you, if you took that away, We'd still kill ourselves. We'd Absolutely. Still kill the and and uh, that's all us. That's all of us. That's everything, you know. Yes. You deny the science. It's still, we're still bad. We're still doing bad things. Yeah. We're using everything. We're using all these finite materials. They're all going to be gone by at the current rate. Actually, as of the current rate a few years ago, and it's ratcheted up since then, well, that's all going to be gone by 2030. Right. Right. So, so as it gets more scary, really think, it will right, get more so valuable and then people will want more of it, right? You know, of course. Scarcity. And it's going to be more crazy. people. Right. The United Nations is still saying we're going to increase the number of people to 10 or 12 billion people by 2050. 
Are right. you crazy? There will never be 10 billion people in this planet, not living ones. Right. It, yeah, you, you'd have to have some massive, just insane, <laughs> um, some kind of farming revolution going on. Yes, yes, you would have to farm children and eat them. That's the only way we would have to affect people on the planet. <laughs> yeah. It would be the road at large scale. Right. Kermit McCarthy's book. Right. Lord, that's... Uh, well... <laughs> I, you know, I, my, my humor sometimes is a little dark for some people. So, sorry about that. Sometimes it just comes out. I think it's funny to think about, you know, farming babies. I mean, they're really tender when they're little like that. <laughs> I understand that's not for everybody. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, but, and, you know, uh, just the, the reality is that we, you know, we kind of do that. We do that already, you know. We, we, we're already involved in that kind of stuff where you have, you know, kids mining coltan in Africa, you, you know, with no, right. and, uh, you know, the, the hundreds of examples of that, of just farming humans and trees and other animals and other species and, you know, oceans and, um, all of it's it. everything. It's not one thing. It's everything, as you're pointing out. If it was just one thing, then we could focus all of our attention on that one thing and maybe we'd make some progress. Yeah. But it's not one thing. It's every human thing. It's, oh, who was it? I can't remember. I quoted this guy in this long quote at the top of my blog. And he says, every human system at some point becomes a complete human trash fire, a, a complete disaster pants clusterfuck, as he says. He says, it doesn't matter whether it's your church, your school, your business, your family, you put too many humans together in one place, and it's a disaster. Right. And that's what we've done. You know, every, every single thing you look around, and it's pretty much an unmitigated disaster. Right. Every and, single and, thing. And it's how we... It's how we manage things that's the problem, right? Like, <laughs> capitalism isn't bad necessarily, and neither is religion, or neither is, you know, whatever. You know, but we are really bad managers. We just, we, we mess it up. We turn it into terrible, terrible, you know, we kill people in the name of, uh, you know, Christ, or, right. you know. In the name of religion. In the name of freedom. People. In the name of whatever. You know, we're, we, we, we kill really great ideas because we, tr you know, turn it into something that is not. And um, we're really good at that. You know, that's the whole story. We could just stop. This could be a 10-second interview. We could just say, in the name of religion, we kill people. That's all you need to know. Right. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah that's a, that's a terrible summation of of uh humankind but that's what it is you know well and it and it's it's really difficult to have this conversation too because it's hard to be polite when you're telling people they've committed their lives to an illusion and most people have committed their lives to an illusion they believed in, in more conventional religions like Christianity or Islam or Judaism, you know, the big three Abrahamic religions, or they believe in some Eastern religion, Hinduism or Buddhism, whatever, or they believe in the religion of civilization. Yeah. The religion of this set of living arrangements being universally good for everybody concerned. Well, talk to those kids you were just thinking about you know, mining coltan in the Congo. Right. Has civilization been so great for them? What about the, the people in Beijing who are making iPhones and there's nets so that when they try to jump out of the building to kill themselves, they can't even do that. They're caught in the net. They're caught in the web, in other words. I mean, That's it's all good. <laughs> yeah. It's not all good. Right. It's all bad. Right. Right. It's just that we can't 
see it or touch it or you know we're not confronted with it as long as we're not confronted with it then right but don't make me think of it yeah don't do that because <laughs> you're bringing you're bumming me out man <laughs> you're bringing me down <laughs> You just need to be more positive. You need to hope a little more and it's all going to be fun. I'm going to go meditate and then I'm going to be really positive and then I'm going to, I'm just going to go love, love the world better. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's not going to hurt. Yeah. You know, I got to hand it to you for that one. It's okay. not going to hurt. And, and, you know, depending upon your dietary preferences along the way, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, guy, I, I'm, I apologize, but I have to go to the the job. Um, is calling my name, and uh, so. Well, thanks for the conversation. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Let's do it again sometime. For sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank for uh, thank you for the talk. Thank for the. You bet. Talk to you soon. My pleasure. All right. Bye. -bye.